Welcome to DC STARS Teacher Assistant Overview. This agenda lists all of the items that we will review in this video. At the top, we will go through the process of, getting, of setting up gradebook preferences, the first step in using electronic gradebook. Then we will walk through the process of creating preps and assessments. We'll see how to edit and copy assessments. We will then enter grades or marks. We will review how to post grades and report grades. Finally, we will take a look at teacher assistant messaging function. This diagram highlights the relationship between the different elements we will be discussing within teacher assistant and the structure of the application, especially as it relates to the setup. Starting at the top, you see a blue bar, gradebook preferences. This is where you start to set up an electronic gradebook. All of the settings established here are carried through all of your work in the gradebook and applied to your entire gradebook. The next item down on the list is preps. Preps are areas that you teach. These are the subjects that you teach and to which you will attach specific courses such as grade 9 phys ed or grade 10 English. Looking down the diagram to the next grouping you see classes. You will note that the diagram shows that there is a one-to-many relationship between preps and classes. In other words, you may teach multiple classes of a specific subject. These multiple classes of the same subject would all be attached to one prep. If, for example, you teach ninth grade English and also you teach 10th grade history, you would be creating two preps, one for English where you can attach all of your English classes since they are the same, and one for history where you can attach your history classes since they are the same. The last item on the list is assessments, and as you can see here, you will attach multiple assessments to each class. To assist you in this process, there is a feature built into the system that allows for the copying of an assessment from one class to another, expediting the setup process. So let's get started. After you enter your login information, and click connect or hit enter. If you teach at more than one school you will see a select teacher screen where you can log in and also select the school that you want to. A class change notification may pop up. This screen, as displayed on the screen in front of you, displays any additions or withdrawals from your class. It displays the class, student, and a message that says left class or new to class. Click the read column to indicate that the change has been read. Once checked, that student no longer appears. You can use check all to expedite the acknowledgement process. Before we begin the setup process, let's have a quick look at the, gra at the gradebook itself. From the teacher assistant start screen, you get to the gradebook by clicking on the spreadsheet button. After the gradebook displays, you define what, what you want to look at at the top of the screen by selecting a class. This is where you specify the class you want to review or enter grades for. Then you select the reporting period you want to work with from the drop-down. All of the reporting periods for your school will appear on the drop-down list. Then you will select a category. We get to talk more about setting up categories later, but for now, we will select all. Next, we will select an assessment type. Assessment types are created by you based on the types of tests, homework, or other graded assignments you will be using in your class. To view the gradebook, we will select all. After those selections are made, you can see that the gradebook displays with columns for each of the assessments that have been created for this class in this reporting period. Down the left hand side you will see the student's name, just as you would in a paper gradebook. To the right of that you see some totals. The first column under screen totals is TAV. This column displays the total cumulative average score for the student to date. The total column displays the total possible points. The earned column displays the number of points the student has actually earned to date and the AVG percent shows the student's weighted average for the specific reporting period, category, and assessment type. 
Then to the right of the totals are the columns for each of the assessments entered for this reporting period. Notice that when you move your cursor over the header for each assessment, the full name of the assessment will be displayed. Notice that the total possible points are different for different assessments depending on how you set them up. Note the color legend button at the bottom of the screen. Scores that meet the criteria shown will be displayed with a color highlight as shown on this list. Scores below a threshold that you specify will be displayed. Let's get started on setting up a gradebook now. Now that we are logged in and past the reminders, we are on the Teacher Assistant Start screen. Having reviewed the gradebook, we will now begin the one-time only process of setting up your gradebook. We can now specify here how we want our gradebook to look and work, which classes we will be teaching, and what assessments we will be administering. To begin the setup process, click on Action, My Preferences, and the My Options tab will be displayed. You will make choices here that will define how your gradebook will look and work. The first item on this screen is Mark Calculation Method. You will need to choose between weighted percentages or total points. Let's discuss that for a moment. If, for example, you have two tests, one with a total value of 100 points and another with a total value of 50 points, and you use weighted percentages, if a student receives a score of 80 on the first test and a score of 40 on the second test, that student's test scores would be of equal value for both tests since the value of the test is weighted the same. Using the other option, total points, the student would earn only 40 points for the second test versus 80 on the first one, and since their final grade is then determined by dividing the total number of points earned by the total number of points possible, using the total points method, the first test has twice the value of the second one. We recommend using weighted percentages here. Just to the right, you'll see posting type. You will select either report cycle or cumulative. The report cycle option calculates students' advisory grades based on the report cycle indicated. Selecting cumulative causes the students' advisory grades to display based on a cumulative average from the start of the year. There are checkboxes just below which allow you to specify how you weight your assessments. Use Assessment Weights allows you to assign different weights to specified assessments. Use Assessment Type Weights allows you to assign a specified weight for all assessments of a designated type. For example, you could say tests are worth 60%, quizzes 10%, homework 30% of their grade. We recommend you select this checkbox. Use Category Weights allows you to weight a category. Weighted categories are not used in most gradebooks and we recommend against selecting this item. The View Report Cycle Weights checkbox should be checked to allow for display of report cycle weights on the prep screen. When the TAVG% percent Include Weight checkbox is checked, the total average grade percentage will reflect the year-to-date total cumulative average. We do recommend checking that. The next item is Default Order of Assessments by Due Date. You must choose Ascending or Descending. Ascending is like a paper gradebook with entries shown left to right and top to bottom. For the electronic gradebook, however, there are advantages to selecting descending order since that puts the most recent entries at the top and left where they are more easily seen. We recommend you choose descending. The remaining four items under the, de under the default order of assessments are also mainly cosmetic. Numeric score default allows you to enter a default numeric score that is displayed when you create a new assessment. If you know that you will create more quizzes than tests, for example, and they will all have a value of 10, then 10 might be the best value for you to use in this field. Default Display Assessment defaults to 150. 
It is the number of assessments that will display on your gradebook for one advisory without refreshing the screen. This number should be more than adequate for most of us. Failure threshold is not the DCPS thresh failure threshold for students. It is only the number of your choosing below which grades in your gradebook will be highlighted. If you set it high or low, it is strictly cosmetic and your preference. Delete assessments at end of year allows you to save assessments if you may use them again in the future or not. It's your choice. Other settings on the right-hand side of the My Options tab include checkboxes that, top to bottom, allow other teachers of your students to see their progress in your class, allow the system to round decimals to the nearest whole number, otherwise numbers are simply truncated, and lastly, allow blank marks to count as zero when the final grade calculations are made. If this is not checked, blank marks are not counted. We re recommend checking all three of these check boxes. The next item you will set up is your prep. You'll click on the My Preps tab to begin. And then you'll start at the top and you'll enter a name for the prep in the field labeled Prep Description. An individual prep will include the course or courses that all have the same gradebook set up, that's weighting, categories, assessment types, etc., on the same prep description. So you could create a prep called English 9, for example, for all of your ninth grade English classes. Next, under Prep Classes, we will choose the classes we are going to include in the prep. To do that, after we enter our description, we click select classes and then we click assign next to the classes to be added and click on the OK button when we're finished. Prep class report cycles shows you the reporting cycles for your school for the year. This section is pre-populated and cannot be modified. The prep category is a way of grouping material by subject or content area or by instructional units. The use of at least one category is required, but if you prefer not to have categories, you could create a single category called general. I'm going to go ahead and enter a few different categories for our demonstration here. And then finally we enter prep assessment types. This is the place where you list out the different types of assessments you are going to be including in your gradebook. You create your list by selecting from the extensive pre-populated list of assessment types then you click add and then check the assign checkbox next to the assessment type you want to include in your list. When you are finished, you click on OK. If you want to select a default assessment type to expedite assessment development, you can do that by selecting default next to the selected assessment type. Remember to save your work when you're finished, and then you can exit using the door icon. We are now ready to go into the gradebook and create the assessments we are going to administer in the system. Remember the assessments are the homework assignments, quizzes, tests, anything that you're going to grade in the electronic gradebook. As with most things here, we begin on the TA start screen. 
Just a quick note, before you can create an assessment, you must have already created a prep for your class. Since I've done that, I'm pretty much ready to go. You begin by highlighting the class that you want to create the assessment for, and then clicking on the spreadsheet button. Once the spreadsheet is displayed, you click on the Add Assessment button at the bottom right, and the Add New Assignment screen will be displayed. Let's give the system a moment to catch up to where I'm talking. Then you enter the long name of your assessment, such as Test 1 in the Name field. Then we're going to enter a short name. Although the short name defaults to the first four letters of the name, I suggest you change it to something more meaningful, no longer than four characters, so that when it is displayed in the gradebook, you can identify the item easily. I'm going to call mine TST1 so that I know it is test number one when I see the short label on the gradebook. Next, I'm going to select Score Type. My test is going to be scored using a numeric mark. The score max is going to be 100. Note that you could also select alpha marks, complete incomplete, or pass fail as your score type. And the score max has defaulted to 10 as per my prep, but I'm going to change it to 100. Now we select a category. One of the categories or instructional units that you created when you created your prep. You could use the general one, or in this case, I'm going to select one called Federal Power. The assessment type is Tests. After you select the assessment type, you'll type out your narrative description for the item. This should be a complete description with all of the details of the assignment so that students know how to prepare or complete the assignment. This narrative description will be displayed in Parent Assistant along with the Parent Tips which are shown just below there. The Parent Tips also displayed in Parent Assistant should explain how the parent can support the pupil in the completion of this assessment. You should provide additional recommended resources here, if applicable, such as relevant websites or any other notes that you think might be useful. Next, we're going to enter an assigned date. The assigned date is the date that you provide the assignments to the students. The due date is the date the assignment is due back to you. The create date is the date that the assessment was created in Teacher Assistant and it defaults to today's date which is normally the date that would be used. I'm going to select the beginning of the school year though. Check the extra credit box only if the entire assignment is intended to be for extra credit. Check the post to parent assistant box to have the assessment display in parent assistant and then enter the date on which you want it to be visible in Parent Assistant. The date you choose might be the beginning of the term for most assignments. You want students to be familiar with in advance. For items though that you want to keep as a surprise like pop quizzes for example, you will enter a date here no earlier than the assigned date. Note that the Use Standardized Test Scores checkbox should not be used. That is all there is to adding a new assignment. So when you've completed the screen, you click on the Save button and then exit using the blue door icon. Next, we're going to demonstrate how to copy assessments. This function allows you to copy assessments from one class to another to expedite the development process. To begin, first you display the assessment on the Add New Assignment screen. From the TA Start screen, 
you click on the View Change Assessment button. And when the TA assignment screen is displayed, it will list all of the assessments that you've developed for the selected course. Highlight the assessment you want to copy and click on the Change Assessment button. The assessment will be displayed on the Add New Assignment screen. Click on the Add This Assessment to Other Classes button. A list of the other classes included in the prep will be displayed. If the assigned date, due date, and reporting term of the assessment are the same for all classes in this reporting term, click on the Copy Selected Info to All button. If, however, the assigned date, due date, and reporting term are different for each class, check the box in the Assigned column next to the class to which the assessment will be added, then select the plus sign next to each column to make the appropriate selection. Don't forget that when you're finished, you need to save your work before you exit. Now that we have our assessments created, we'll look at how to enter grades for these assessments in our electronic gradebook. That's next. Now we're going to enter marks into our gradebook. Marks, or grades as they are known. There are several ways to enter grades into the gradebook. The easiest way is to start from the TA Start screen, which we're going to demonstrate in just a moment. This demonstration is also going to show you all of the different methods that can be used. We can enter pass-fail, complete-incomplete, alpha grades, or numeric scores into the system. And we're going to show you quickly how all those look on the different screens. So let's begin. The easiest way, as I say, is to click on the Spreadsheet button, and then you're taken to the gradebook, and you can enter marks directly into the columns next to the students' names. That's the simplest way to get grades into the gradebook. However, when entering marks directly into the gradebook that way, you do not have the option of entering comments or the option to mark the assignment late or exempt the student from the stu or exempt the item from a student's final grade calculation. To do those things, you have to click on the Enter Mark Comments button, and you'll be taken to the Teacher Entry Grade slash Comments window shown here. At the top of the window, you'll need to select the reporting term and the assessment that you want to enter grades for. Then you can enter grades. You enter your marks. This is set up for numeric marks. It provides you the percent calculation automatically. You can change them if you change your mind. If you recall, we see that one entry in pink. Remember the um, color key. We can mark them exempt or late if necessary. Remember to save your work on the screen before you exit. And then you go through the door to return to the summary screen. Now we're back on the gradebook. Notice that some are in green. That means that it was exempt. The light blue means it was late. The orange is over maximum. That 101 was not really uh, eligible. Now let's select a different assessment. This one is set up as a pass-fail assessment. So instead of entering a score, all you do here is you click Pass or Fail, and the system automatically assigns the, the numeric score that you previously assigned when you set up the assessment. So we said Pass, and that was worth 100%. Fail, worth 0. These items can also be marked exempt or late if necessary. Then let's go back to the screen. We'll select now a different assessment. This one was set up as alpha grades, A, B, C, D, F. When we enter those, you can see that the system automatically calculates the percentage score that would be attributed to that particular grade. 
Once again, they can still be marked later exempt. Don't forget to save before you leave. Coming back, you can see them on the gradebook screen now. One final assessment we're going to have a quick look at. This is complete or incomplete. Same principles at work. We mark it complete. The system assigns the score we told the system to assign when we set up the assessment. You're going to save before you leave, and then you can exit through the door to come back to the spreadsheet. That's all there is to it. Next task is to print a mark summary report, or in other words, a printable view of the spreadsheet of the gradebook. So in order to do that, we start with the TA Start screen, and we click on the Spreadsheet button. And then we're taken to the gradebook. From the drop-down menus under each item at the top, we select the reporting period, category, and assessment types to be displayed on the report. I'm going to select all for each. And then we click on the printer icon at the bottom of the screen. The reports dialog box displays. Check the box next to display student name to produce a report with student names and marks. If this box is left unchecked, it will produce a report with pupil numbers and marks. To print out a spreadsheet with empty columns provided to record marks for assessments by hand, enter the number of blank columns to be displayed on the printout. As always, remember in DC Stars to turn off your pop-up blockers to generate the report. It will be generated as a PDF, an Adobe PDF file and it will be available then for your review or print. And that's it. Here we have a close-up view of what the report looks like when it's finished. You'll see the student names on the left-hand side because we selected that option. You'll see the total average percentage, the total points earned, and the average score earned, the different assessments displayed to the right. That's what the report looks like. As I say, you can print from here, save it, or simply review it and close it. That's all for creating the Mark Summary Report. Now we're going to demonstrate the process of posting marks to a report card a very simple process that you begin on the TA Start screen by clicking on Spreadsheet to take you to the gradebook and then you click on the Post Grades to Report Card button in the lower left or Post Marks to Report Card button. You're immediately prompted by the system with a warning that you're going to overwrite any existing marks entered previously. We're comfortable with that because we have not entered marks previously. This is the first time that we're going to post to the report card. So we're going to go ahead and click on Yes on this box. It takes us to another dialog box that asks us, how do you want to post these marks? Do you want to post them numerically or by alpha grade? We're going to select alpha grade and then click on OK. Once we do that, that's pretty much the end of the process. We come back to the reporting period marks screen. It shows you the marks are entered. You can exit through the door. The system does provide an additional warning. It says marks were successfully posted. Please remember that if you change marks in your workbook, you will need to post them again to ensure that report cards reflect those changes. So that's not automatically done if you update your workbook later manually. You need to come back and post the grades once again. This next demonstration is how to enter marks manually. Let's talk for a moment about entering progress report marks or advisory marks manually. Progress report marks do not post automatically, and if you have not posted marks from each advisory period, the final grade must also be input manually. So to enter marks manually, we begin on the TA gradebook screen. We click on the spreadsheet button to get there, and then we click on reporting term marks button at the bottom of the screen. We enter marks in the post column of the appropriate reporting term. We save and then exit.
So the next item that we're going to demonstrate is posting final exam marks. This is a very straightforward process, very similar to posting marks manually, the process that we just finished demonstrating. The main difference is there's an additional step. You must create an assessment in the reporting term exam grade that's called final exam. So once you've created this assessment called final exam, it'll post onto your spreadsheet or onto your gradebook and you can mark the grades into it just the way you would any other assessment. So let's look at how that's done. We first start by clicking on the spreadsheet button. It takes us to our gradebook. We select the reporting term exam grade. We click add assessment and we add our assessment here. So I'm going to go ahead and create the assessment just the way we normally do. I'm going to enter my assignment date, the date of the exam, my due date, same date. The create date is going to be the beginning of the school year, just the way I did for all the others. It would normally be the day that you're actually creating it. It's not extra credit. I'm going to post it to Parent Assistant on the beginning of school so that parents can see when the final exam is. I'm going to save it. I'm going to modify my short name so it's FNL. I'm saving it and I'm returning, clicking on the door to return to my gradebook. So there's my final. If I want to actually enter grades, I can of course do them here, or I can go to the Mark Entry screen by clicking on Enter Mark Comments. I have to select the assessment. Remember at the top of the screen, select Final. There are my students. I can enter my marks here. And that's all there is to it. I will just have a quick look at what that looks like. We're entering marks on the Teacher Enter Grade Comments screen, just the way you do for any other gradebook item. Once you're finished, you can save, and when you come through the door, you'll be returned to the gradebook. Remember that you may want to post these marks. If you are adding this after you've posted marks to the report card, you may want to post again. To the last demonstration we're going to conduct is of the messaging function in Teacher Assistant. You are able to use Teacher Assistant to send and receive messages to and from parents who are using Parent Assistant. These are private messages similar to emails in both form and function. To begin to send a message, first you select the student whose parents you're going to send the message to. Then you click on the Other Features button. Then you click on Send Message. You indicate Parent. You enter your title your text, and you click on the Send Message button at the bottom, and that's all there is to it.